All right, that's it. Uh, thanks for joining us on Zoo and You. Uh, we're here with uh, Jim Doxy, Mr. Garrett Core, and uh, me, Sean Casey. And uh, we want to be able to talk to you about stuff that you're talking to us about. Jim's bringing some questions to the table, and then hopefully I'll have some answers. And answers I don't have, Garrett will probably have. We'll see how this goes. There we go. All right, one of the questions we've been getting a lot lately is uh, ever since we launched the new Dirty Weekend 6, people are wondering, how's that different from the Union 6 or the Union 6 Supreme? There are similar price points with the Union 6 being a little more, but people are wondering why um, should I choose one or the, over the other? Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty common question. I'm kind of getting the same uh, from older customers that are hitting me. Garrett, you, how about you? Uh, yeah, similar. I mean, it's all across the board for sure. So uh, the, the coax driver is... It looks real similar to our full range driver that we use on the 260 or on the uh, Dirty Weekend. It's not the same. There's, it, it, it shares a, a similar framework uh, just because we like that full range driver, the concentric uh, elements, the, the whizzer. So the, the, those fundamental parts are all uh, in the same neighborhood. But the execution and how they're implemented is quite different. The voice coil on the Union, the coax driver, is uh, underhung. It's got higher flux density. It's got, it's got a higher magnetic field surrounding the coil. The coil itself is also able to generate a higher, uh, a more efficient magnetic coupling with the static magnetic field. It's designed to be lighter in weight. Everything about that driver is slightly lighter, so it's more dynamically expressive. Uh, you, it's it's more efficient. Generally, it's also an eight ohm coil. the 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 coil that we use on the Dirty Weekend Six is a twelve ohm coil. Uh, but so before I get too hung up in the details and the technical, and and this is and Garrett, you're welcome to to talk about this anytime you want this the dirty weekend is for a lot of different amplifiers a lot of different people a lot of different rooms it wants to make you happy and it doesn't require much fuss to get there yeah you don't have to put the right amp on it. You don't have to put the right cables. It doesn't have to go in the right spot in your room. You literally can plomp them any place with almost any amp, with whatever cable, as long as they're hooked up and hooked up in the right phase, you know, red to red, black to black, and you're probably going to get a big smile on your face regardless of the kind of music you put on it. So uh, it, it's less efficient, so it, that is an element that we use to mask some possible problems. A lot of the problems that bug me are amplifier-related. I don't, I don't know that there's all that many good-sounding amplifiers, uh, it also masks the room's contribution to the sound, which is a huge component, but our brains seem to be pretty well uh, equipped to sort that out. So as long as the room isn't offending too bad, your brain isn't going to say, hey, this sounds terrible, even if it might. Um, and then the speaker itself, it offends in very subtle ways, ways in which your brain can uh, turn off, and it pleases in big, bold ways. So if it's frequency response. It's got good bass with almost every amp. Uh, Mid-range is pleasant, slightly subdued, so you know it, it's not going to be shouty. And then the treble is, is detailed without being aggressive. So, so it's a pleaser. And I'm in the mood for please once in a while. I, and, and when I'm in those kind of moods where I don't want to mess with stuff, I put the Dirty Weekends in, or I go to the room with Dirty Weekends, and that's what I play. We get questions a lot about um, different styles of music. People say, hey, I hear Zoo doesn't do classical music well yeah, or does all... rock music well. <laughs> I just I just heard this 30 minutes ago from a customer email out of Sweden, and he was just wondering what types of music play well on Dirty Weekend 6 and what don't, or does it really matter? Yeah, I don't think it matters. Nobody, we all have different tastes we don't all like the same kind of music we don't have the same song as our favorites you and i dig rush 
Ian probably can't stand Rush. I don't know. I'm just, you know, there's people out there who can't stand Rush. Yeah. Uh, but there's, regardless of the kinds of recordings you play on Dirty Weekend, the way the Dirty Weekend plays as a whole, it's not offensive. So there's a lot of terrible recordings from the 70s and 80s because, well, cocaine was everywhere in the recording industry. And because of that, people, you hear different when your heart's racing 120 beats per minute. So it, all these hot mixes... And then there was also some tech that was being employed. People were just figuring out how to use presence in, in interesting ways. And they're, they're cooked. These recordings are aggressive, overly present. Asia, you know, mm-hmm. Emerson, Lake and Pal- uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer's recordings generally, especially early pressings on vinyl, I think sound fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then you listen to what, uh, wasn't Greg Lake in Asia? I think Greg Lake did Asia. Anyway, one of them did Asia, you know, another super group. Yep. And Asia's like, everybody's on coke and everybody's got the presence on all channels at maximum. The heat at the moment. Yeah. Right, right, right. And so <laughs> it, it sounds pretty good, but it's crispy and it sounds good on some systems that, uh, that, that are less revealing but you put that same thing on a say a union our new union on an amplifier that is uh, less forgiving or doesn't have any a non-single ended triode amp a solid state amp especially one that might be itself kind of on the crispy side and it's going to be extra crispy and sizzly and your ears are going to bleed after the album's done and you're going to be done listening to music for a while but the same is not true with the Dirty Weekend. So it's less about the recordings, I think. If if you like classical music, it should be able to play classical music. Uh, a, a, a lot of how people respond to the the type of music that they're listening to, though, I think a lot of it depends on their expectations, their frame of references. Um, I like classical music when the weather's cool. For some reason, I listen to classical in the in the winter month months. Uh, sometimes in the fall, that's when I listened to classical music as a kid. I didn't listen to classical music in the summer. It was in the fall and winter, and I generally was at concerts when I would listen. So I have this frame of reference. And so when I listen to classical music, it has to be big and bold and live levels. If it's not, it doesn't. it's not worth it for me to put on classical music and listen soft. I'll pull out cans, some headphones, and put the headphones in to give me that the sound pressure levels that I'm looking for, my ears are looking for, but then also then there's another thing too, when you're listening to ear, you know, when you're listening to headphones, you, you miss some of the sensory input to the rest of your body. Mm. It's a compl- you, that's a complicated question. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the less than ideal answer. Uh, I'll try to think about that and give better answers on that in the future. Um, do you have, do you, do you have, what do you, do you have anything <coughs> to say on that G? Get into the. <clears throat> no, I mean everybody is different, just like you said. I mean, it is a classic question that we do get. You know, it's like, oh, it's only good for rock. It's only good for this. I mean, really, get them in your home, listen to them. That's going to be the end all, say all. You know, for you to try it out and see what works best for you. I mean, you can tell me it looks blue, you know, and it may be red and whatever else. It doesn't matter. You know, just listen to it, and what makes your ears happy is going to, you know please you the most yeah that's a good point the arbiter of whether something sounds good or not has nothing to do with anyone else other than the person experiencing the thing yeah no i've i've seen that as well some people love certain speakers some people don't it's kind of a individual choice yeah yeah and it really makes no difference i don't get mad at garrett if he likes a different brand of motorcycle than me it doesn't matter (laughs) what matters is that we can go enjoy riding bikes together and have and enjoy the experience so if you're if if people are looking to have shared experience Oh, well, the best way to do that is have a listening party like you did in high school when you robbed your older brother's record collection and, and you sat down and listened to the new Rush album. And, and that shared experience is way better than the virtual arguing shared experience of being on a forum or at an audio show where it's combative as opposed to appreciative. Yeah. No, thanks. Uh, one of the other questions we get a lot is what amp should I use? And this is going to open a whole can of worms because it probably is different on every speaker. But we get that question probably several times a day is, hey, I've got 
the Soul Sixes or the Dirty Weekends or the Unions, what amp do you recommend and which one do you not? So I think this is an <clears throat> easy question okay. from this perspective. Tell me what music you like. Tell me what your room looks like. Tell me what your budget is. Uh, tell me what you like when you go to live shows and which live shows you go to, and then I can tell you which amplifier to buy. Without those information, that information, I have no idea because it is, it's an individual thing. Your your loudspeaker system is a loudspeaker system. It has everything to do with everything connected to it. If you change one thing, it affects the sound of the whole. So. <clears throat> The loudspeaker amplifier relationship is a, is a critical big part of the puzzle. Uh, so, do you have any general guidelines on what type of amps you like versus which ones you don't? Or, um, I have amp issues. There's not a lot of amps I love. Mm. Uh, when I'm in the mood just to be happy and not fuss with stuff and not you know manipulate signals and manipulate the room and build specific speakers for how i feel in the moment i usually put on a single-ended triode something that you know i do like i like the sound of a 45 tube generally it's so some tubes require you to design in certain ways because the tube itself requires that and so you get a certain kind of sound so there's a type of tube out there a 45 tube that that requires you to do certain things to get it to even operate and if you do those certain things almost all designs sound good the same is not true with a 300 b tube which is in the tube world a single-ended triode vacuum tube called the 300 b is uh you know kind of the the mother of most tubes. It, it was designed for audio. Uh, it was designed not for playback, but it was designed for audio. And it has a really luscious, great mid-range. But most tube designs, tube amp designs with 300 Bs, only have luscious mid-range and they suck in the bass and they suck in the highs. Mm. But there's not all of them. There's a few. The Audion 300 B, uh, you know, Crazy guy named Graham over in the south of France now, originally out of Brighton, UK, uh, England. Uh, yeah, the, his 300B sounds amazing, and it uses small output transformers for the you know the coupling between the tube and the loudspeaker. And uh, you wouldn't guess this thing to sound amazing. And for the money, it's amazing. It's an amp that I can hook on to almost every loudspeaker we make, and I'm satisfied. Don't you think so on that one? The 300B Audion, Garrett, what, or what, what are some amps you dig? Yeah, I mean, the Silver Knight uh, from Audion sounds really good. That Yamamoto AO8S with that 45 tube. Two watts per channel, I mean, it sounds really clean, really good, but I mean, that's the kind of thing, you know, it's like when we do get this amp question quite a bit, uh, you know, some people come and say, well, you know, I've got this headphone amp, right? I've got this linear tube audio uh, little one-watt headphone amp. Will it work? Well, the answer is yes, it will work, but is it enough for what you need to do to, you know, depending on your room? I mean, this goes back to your original, you know, comment saying, okay, I need to know what your listening style is, uh, you know, how you listen, what you listen to. And a lot of people get hung up on that too. It's like, well, why does that matter? You should have a loudspeaker that works with anything. And, you know, you could go off on all these different tangents, but. You know, for most home applications, yes, you know, that's why we give the recommendation of, say, 4 watts minimum, 200 to 300 continuous watts, you know, max input. Um, but for most homes, 15 to 30 watts of solid power is easily capable of reaching concert levels with the high sensitivity of our speakers. So, yes, because of the high sensitivity, you don't need a lot of power to drive them but to fill your large open floor plan or, you know, play Rush or play some of these huge dynamic pieces at those sound pressure levels that you're looking for, yeah, a little extra power is going to give it, you what you need. On that, so we're not just about tube audio. So, like, in, you know, this whole debate, tubes versus solid state, it's horseshit. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter. It's like saying, you know, which is, I don't, it's, re, it's a ridiculous argument. So it's not that I love tubes and it's not like Garrett loves tubes. We like certain sounds and then these others are just tools in the toolbox. 
But sometimes you need big, huge sound and you need a lot of power. Even if you're only using, say, 20 watts of it RMS, you need the the headroom or you need the grace that high power provides. So when I'm listening to classical music, a pair of speakers that I re- or a pair of uh, amps that I love are the uh, Pass Lab 60.8s. Uh, six, it's a class A solid state design, which you know, it's a which is a how the operational characteristic of the amplifier is when people say class A. Anyway, that's a whole nother discussion, yeah. but. Um, it's a it's an it's the sixty point eight, it's a sixty watts per channel, uh, with pretty huge headroom and into our speakers, uh, it's a pretty amazing sound. It, it'll get you close to concert levels even if you're playing Mahler, big symphony stuff, or uh, doom metal, or you know everything in between there's a lot of crazy avant-garde stuff that i I think you can only listen to loud and almost all dance music should be listened to at dance club levels to to sound right uh so and 60 watts what a lot of people would say well that's still not very much better Uh, that's that's true another amp that uh rick henthorne turned me on to is that big you know you've seen that big bows floating around from here and you know time to time and different different rigs and the the PM eighty five hundred is you know it gives me sixteen hundred watts of really easy RMS to work with per channel or or four hundred watts. There's a lot of different ways to configure that, and then it has built in signal processing to more tools. Since I know which targets of sound I'm going for, it allows me to really experiment with how this thing is going to interface with speakers or rooms or with the songs I'm playing. Uh, so anyway, we're not all about tubes, but we for sure are our collective group. And I think you're probably, I know you, I mean, so Jim is a, a music, simplicity. Yeah, yeah, but Jim is a music junkie. Uh, he's, he's not a hi-fi guy, but he's quickly becoming one. And I'm sorry about that, Jim. Yeah. I'm still sticking <laughs> away from vinyl though. I'm too low maintenance. Oh, that's I okay. Like to stream. Yeah, so, it's fine. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So like, yeah. So, and that's a, that's a, another built in question that you didn't ask yeah. and we're not going to talk too much about it, but I don't discriminate for mediums. Mediums are opportunity. Some, some music only exists on a cassette. Some music only exists on a record. And then the formats themselves sound different because it's a different medium. So, you know, if you're into photography and you like black and white or you like color, you know, it again, it, it's a taste, it's a preference. But you are missing out. <laughs>